This is a fascinating story. Uh, Igor, thank you. Uh, so Russia is sending medical supplies to the United States. NATO is canceling its military exercises intended to show Russia who's boss. And we've also learned that the U.S. is offering to lift sanctions on Venezuela, although it comes with a caveat, by the way, uh, that the Venezuelan president must offer to share his power uh, with his opponent. But wait, wait, wait. We have just received another bulletin, which kind of changes the emphasis of how we were actually going to originally do this story, because as you can see, we were looking at all these signs that countries were starting to cooperate during this very difficult time. But the president of the United States has just literally thrown a wrench into this uh, story. Breaking news, uh, President Trump is now saying that Iran is planning a sneak attack on U.S. Uh, troops. Uh, in Iraq, uh, upon information and belief, Iran or its proxies are planning a sneak attack on U.S. troops or assets. And if this happens, says the president, Iran will pay a very heavy price indeed. And uh, he's making this very important global announcement on Twitter, by the way. Uh, all right, joining us now, former British MP and international analyst uh, for us, uh, George Galloway, who's uh, good enough to uh, join us. Uh, I guess, you know, it's funny, George. Uh, I had planned to start this conversation with you about something you and I had been talking about this week, and that is uh, countries maybe growing closer together because of the coronavirus. But this bulletin just arrived from the President of the United States on something he tweeted. What sayeth you to this? Well, I suspect that this is as inaccurate as previous pronouncements about Iran in the case of the assassination of the Iranian general, for example, the whole world now knows that that was based on absolutely false information. I'd be astounded if Iran, in the throes of the pandemic, biting so hard into their population, would take any such risk. Uh, so I'm sorry that uh, Donald Trump spoiled the atmosphere, which was coming along, as you said, really very well. Uh, America is the worst hit country in the world now, and the whole world should come to the aid of America. And uh, that's the international amity that you and I were looking forward to mm -hmm. in our conversation just the other day. Uh, China and Cuba are all over Europe now. There are Chinese, Cuban, Russian, medical personnel, airplanes arriving. Uh, 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 equipment, protective equipment, diagnostic equipment, and so on, being unloaded. And previous enmities uh, have been melting away, and a new possibility of amity uh, was uh, arriving and arising. And I very much hope that that will continue, because it's quite clear that no man is an island, no country is an island, even and we <laughs> geographically are an island. Uh, no one is safe from the passage in space and via droplets of a hideous weapon, uh, which is nobody's weapon, but is killing indiscriminately and harming indiscriminately. Yeah. Even politicians, royals, doesn't make any exception for how much of a VIP you but politics is politics. And let me tell you something about politics in the United States, if you don't know this, George, and I think you do. It has a lot to do with money, and it has a lot to do with people who give money to campaigns. And one of the richest men in the world is Sheldon Adelson, the casino magnate. And I guarantee you that right now he is applauding this tweet by Donald Trump. I'm sure that that's true. I continue to believe, not many of my fellow thinkers do, Donald Trump's best instincts are not bad instincts. As I listened to him there on your show, mm -hmm. uh, he sounded kind of like a big, bluff, naive American with, whose heart was in the right place. And if Donald Trump would be free to act, I think he'd act a lot better than he has been. He's surrounded by people, funder and, and lieutenants like Pompeo, for example, who is, I think, highly problematic in the U.S. administration, always turning up the volume of agro, as we call it, rather than turning mm -hmm. it down. Uh, I, I believe that we have a situation where the democratic side of politics in your country 
hates Russia, and the Republican side of politics in your country hates China, and none of that is doing anybody any good. So I hope that we'll go with Donald Trump's better instincts, that good angel on his shoulder, which says, people are surprising me, happily surprising me, with their openness, with their willingness to help us, and we embrace it, and we will reciprocate it implicitly. Uh, I think that that's the way forward, and this gives us a new opportunity. We can wipe the slate clean, you know, after this is over. We can start afresh what went wrong in our societies, why they were so defenseless, such a highly predictable uh, contagious disease. People have been making movies about contagions for a decade. Everyone knew that this kind of thing was possible and likely, maybe highly likely, yet nobody took any steps in your country or in mine to prepare themselves to defend against it. George Galloway, as usual, uh, thank you so much. And